Hello and welcome back to Railroads Online. So today we are going to be running the Super Heisler and we are taking it on its maiden voyage down the hill and back up the other side is the real uh, scary part I guess or wondersome part whether we will make it or not. Uh, we did have, we do have, not did have, uh, we had five coal cars, er, of the coal cars sitting here that were full already, and then we brought out the other five from the iron mine, and have not run the journey out to the iron works yet, so we are gonna do that, uh, right now. Uh, running the Super Heisler or the Double Headed Heisler is definitely a bit of a learning experience. Uh, pretty easy when it's empty, but uh, when, it, when we actually require both poles, it's going to be an interesting figure all that out. And these things are a little on the tippy side so i gotta be honest and say i don't know we'll have to see how how the whole journey goes we could uh definitely end up with this thing flipped on its side picking up too much speed so and uh two heislers alone i'm sure are a massive amount of weight um, I'd have to look so I'm not gonna quote numbers but I know they're heavy so uh, two of them put together I'm sure are an absolute load so we're gonna use you know the one we're just gonna use one as much as we can and we probably only need the second one for a little bit of uphill coming out of Smelter Valley, but um, I'm kind of looking at it like it's really it's it's a wood tinder with uh, with some oomph when we need it. <laughs> so that's our uh, that's our new mash the overdrive button. Oh, why we're dragging the brakes so much? That's why we're going so slow. Because this corner is coming up here, and there's nothing like super friendly about this corner. Because once you get going too fast in here, there's no real slowing down that many cars either. And it's not like you can just see yeah, right there. You see the Heisler start rocking. The cars are generally fine, but the Heisler starts, you know, rocking. That thing does not like to turn around, or not turn around, but it does not like to turn on downhill grades real sharp it just wants to start rocking and i suppose because i mean it's got well three thousand or whatever this is pounds or gallons of water i i don't i don't really know what this represents but it's got a lot of water in there slapping around i suppose and I don't know if that's actually modeled in the game or not, and that's why it's so tippy, or if it's just because this model of train is high compared to, you know, the wheel set. is It does all sit up above the wheels, which probably would have made them somewhat tippy. I guess I don't know. I have a hard time, you know, imagining they were too super crazy tippy, but then if they were, they just didn't put them on twisty track, you know? And they knew to make wider turns than I have accounted for. I know I got a couple of spots that the Heisler wobbles out here. The Class 70, I can run it out here, and the Class 70 does not wobble. It doesn't have any kind of problem. So, I, uh, you know, I don't have too bad a problem with the track, but the, um... Uh, the Heisler gets wobbly. Which is kind of why I was trying to get away from running the Heisler out here. I was uh, trying to switch over to the Class 70 out here. 
more so than these, but I think um, I don't really want to double head a class 70. I don't like the idea of double heading any of them that have cow catchers on them because that's, I don't, you know, I don't know if they ever did that. I have my doubts. <laughs> I've never actually seen um, locomotives with a cow catcher on it being double headed. Not in the it, not like game shots or anything, but I've never seen that in in a real life picture. And maybe it happened. I don't know. I have no clue at all. It's it's probably very probable that it did. Um, in fact, if you have a picture of it, share it in the Discord. Um, I don't, but I don't have any idea that that's ever happened. So I just don't like the idea of trying to do it and then being like, that's not right. And that doesn't mean I am not by in any means saying everything we've done on the railroad is right. I just don't want to do, I guess, crazy wrong. So my idea was these could be double-headed because they don't have the cow catchers on them and the Heisler is so much easier to run than the Climax so even though the Climax pulls more there's no doubt about it um but I don't it's too it's too hard to run uh just one let alone two to be honest when it comes to really heavy stuff, it's like you can pull a ton with the Climax, but it also likes to blow the tires off it all the time. And that gets to be a bit of a bit of a challenge after a while, to be honest. So I don't um I don't wanna try to step out whoa on a limb and do um do too much of that. I guess although we really should not be trying to pick up no great bunch of speed until all of those coal cars are off the turn there. This is a decent sized uh, locomotive at least in my opinion. Or train not locomotive. It's a decent sized train. Once you get 10 cars put together it uh, you know it becomes a heck of a challenge to be at least in my opinion you uh just seeing back far enough like that the ones for the logs that we do the uh 16 car train is the most obnoxious thing because you can't even really see the end of it you just kind of have to pay attention to where you are and re uh, like relative to something some other part of the train the locomotive or or other cars and then just know that the back ends where it should be and that's um that's great until you get distracted and then you're like, uh, great, where was I? And so that, that locomotive can be a heck of a challenge. I'm not a real super fan, uh, I guess, of trying to do anything over 10 cars. And this one being, you know, 10 cars and two locomotives is uh, definitely a big enough train for me. So... I just kind of am happy to happy to be able to actually get like a hundred coal. Although as I'm looking back there, that one car looks like it is not full. All right, what's the problem? We're just not giving it enough juice for this size of train. Yeah, it looks like that third car back has one missing. So, whatever. Huh. I mean, if we get... I don't know. If we get 90 coal out there in one trip, I'll be happy. At least it'll make this... Um, long trip worth the run this is by far the longest run we have in the game i i uh really am looking forward to the tunnel to cut down on this run um if we can get 
you know, over to the oil refinery and then down to the um, ironworks from there. This will be a much nicer run instead of being, um, this will end up being a pretty long run by the time we run all the way down and then run back to the refinery. Well, to the ironworks. At any rate, this gets to be a, a fairly long run. I mean, definitely the longest run in the game for us. That's for sure. So, I, I, any, <clears throat> excuse me, anything we could do to cut down on this run, I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, you're still going to have to come out this way from, from the iron to out here. So you're still going to get to run through this valley, which don't get me wrong. This is, this valley is insane, right? I mean, great place to have to lay a track. I know eventually I would like to get this lower to the ground so that it isn't just this insane trestle all the way up. Um, I kind of told myself, <clears throat> excuse me, in the process of laying this track that it was like, uh, we look at it like this river can flood, you know, and if this river were prone to flooding, then that would have given them an excuse to build up on... Um, up on the trestles because well and it's good even if the water goes high and so that's that's uh that was my justification for running the trestles most of the way which doesn't necessarily fit with we do have some sections of wall in where it gets low but it is all at least fixed structure and it came out the way it came out. A lot of this run, the groundwork is janky because rather than following the groundwork, I more just laid the track in a better direction than the groundwork. The groundwork, this was a long track to lay. And so at a point, we were just kind of trying to get it laid. And um, we haven't gone back through to redo it. At this point, I would relay the groundwork and sink the track more so than change the actual track laying but or just clean it up in sections but this one was i you know i remember laying this track this was hours of laying track because especially at this point we we still weren't very good at laying like long track works and stuff you know by the time you get out to the refineries you get a lot better about it but at the point we were laying this we had just come off of fighting through getting to the iron mine and uh your first time laying track to the iron mine is definitely i don't know probably your ugliest hardest venture that or down to the smelter whichever direction you go in there is when you first start really encountering massive hills in that in the track laying process so you know most times unless you really go about it with a big plan you're probably going to run into some uglies in there kind of just your natural progression through the game but you know where it goes into low spots we have Mainly trestle, justifying, you know, water flooding. At least the train seems to be handling this okay, so if we can get it through the switches, you know. Hopefully, this extra Heisler is going to add a lot of heft coming up that hill. Because, you know, we have it on, on uh, the video when we did it with the... Uh, class 70 of how slow that thing barely creeped up the hill. So I'm hoping adding two Heislers together should be a fair amount stronger than one class 70.
But I guess the proof is in the pudding and we'll find out when we get there. And there's our tree marker for the switch coming up. So we will have to slow it down up here. That's probably good enough. We can now run ahead and flip that switch and we'll have one more switch up at the turn down the hill which I think we'll probably just run up there and switch it because stopping that train after that is going to be kind of a task hopefully I'm pretty sure the switch down at the smelter is turned to actually go into the smelter. So if we can't get it stopped, we'll end up running around that loop when we don't need to. Not that I guess it's a super big loop, but getting this thing to uh, come to a stop on a downhill I don't think is going to be a favorable action. See that train's going backwards just simply because of the little grade that's right there. And that's not even a real grade. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see. Lots of brakes. Alright, that'll get her stopped. And we'll go back to this one. Throw some fire in here. Well, we'll throw some wood in there and let it catch on fire, I guess. And then we'll jump back over here. Run you down. Oop, run you down the hill. And then, then it's going to be all breaks for a minute. The real challenge is coming up here when we hit this 3% grade. Alright, so sorry about a cut in there, but I had to had a tragedy to deal with, so okay. Now that's out of the way, and we are back at recording which whoa we are going way too fast way 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 too fast that's not gonna slow us down come on ease it back now ease it back all the brakes this one train has is not gonna be enough to do a uh, thing when this train starts to run the 10 cars are just the 10 coal cars are heavy I mean that's a heavy load I'm not sure oops see we're in reverse and it's still going for her. all the brakes on in reverse we're just sloppy with that okay get back in it So we're not going to go too nuts here because we know at the bottom of the hill we have another track switch and uh, hopefully we can get it stopped for that switch. Really, I, I don't know. We might just run the loop around the smelter because we don't have any other option. Of course, that said, we need fuel in here. After dealing with all that, 
We need fuel. Probably then in both locomotives. And while we're over here, we might as well set the brakes on this one. And maybe between the two, we'll actually come to a stop. Okay, that's full. Put some wood back in that stack. Run down here, flip a switch or two. And then the real challenge begins. Let's be honest. This is where this is where the money meets the road or however that goes, but this is uh this is the part that counts, so we'll run it up the hill and see how this goes. Still a pretty good journey out to the um, smelter, so I or to the ironworks. I'm sorry, smelter's right there. Uh, out to the ironworks, so I don't know. I don't know if I got that kind of time. I guess now with things going on, but we will see if we can get it all the way out there. All right. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, I would not complain if this was just walking speed and we could go faster. A lot of ground to cover and it's just kind of a waste of time. But, you know, too, who knows? Just chilling and that's the real, right? You got to walk from place to place. So, um, but if this guy moved a little faster. I don't think it would be a bad thing. He is not rocket speed. All right, so we will, I think, do it like this. Kill the brake on this one. Then that one's in forward. Go back to this one. We will kill the brakes. This one is going to run in reverse. And here's the hoping we can actually get some oomph out of these things. I don't know if you lose any kind of power running you know in reverse versus running forward i guess in my world i don't think you do three four five six seven ten all right everything's still there we really should have saved the game at some point along here this could be an absolute tragedy Forward, no brakes, and uh, more oomph. This is going to get obnoxiously loud, probably. I don't know. It's going to get... <laughs> it could get crazy loud. I don't know, we'll have to see. I did try turning everything down because I had the suspicion this was going to be obnoxiously loud. So I'll we'll have to see how that all comes out. Uh, that, I did definitely change audio settings for this recording. So who knows? Could end up having to redo the whole thing. In between that and dog stuff. But hey, sometimes real life just creeps in the way and it is what it is. You do the best you can. So, here, you know. This is definitely working better than the Class 70. No doubt about it. And we have more power option here. So, as soon as we get around this 
this uh, last, I don't know, too sharp a turn, realistically. We'll give it uh, give it the go, but we've had uh, enough problems moving around these hopper cars today that uh, we need to try to avoid any more any more of that. I don't know. Some mystical things were happening to the train when I was hooking these up up there at the um, iron mine or at the coal mine. Uh, I don't know. Six cars detached, a couple derailed. I don't know what what exactly the deal is. But we're definitely making making it up the track much easier and faster than the class 70 did. This is um, it's taking two locomotives to do it, but it's doing it like at a decent rate. I have no problem with this. We could actually probably add a few more cars, judging by how easy this one's actually coming up the hill. Uh oh. Here's where we're going to run into a problem. We're not going to make it up there before the train does. See if that worked. Woo! Whoa! Well, that was as close to a catastrophe as I care to be. I like how the brakes were basically like didn't really seem to do much. That's insane. Wow. Well, catastrophe averted. All right, I think we can shut that one down. Get back up to this one. And now we're just running a regular locomotive again. All that extra effort, I guess, just for that little push right there. But that little push works. I mean, that's a double header success, boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. We just <laughs> we just about ran two locomotives and ten freight cars right off of the rail. But uh, I think we succeeded by uh, the skin on our teeth. Or just however you want to say it. That was... Ooh. I, wow. <laughs> it was worth a roll of the dice. But then not really. Because if it would have derailed, it was not worth it. But I don't know how big a pain in the butt this thing would have been to be backing up on the uh, hill right there. Or try to hold... After backing up. That was crazy. <laughs> that was one of our uh, closest calls yet, I think, there. In fact, I would bet that the those front wheels could have gone in either direction. And let's see if we can get a glimpse at our track up ahead because I don't think I don't know where anything is set I don't even want to say alright that one we're clear that one looked okay yeah we might be good I mean, I suppose this came from out there in the field area somewhere. For, I don't remember where it was. Out in front of the ironworks or something. Which way are we here? Yeah, we're good. Check that out. Ten coal cars. And one lo I mean, not one loco, but in one freight train. The double header works. And we're going to call that one a win. 
Uh oh. Here we gotta stop. Oh, you jumped out the wrong way, you goof. Get out of the train. I like how you lean forward when you're trying to go in a hurry because you think it's going to help you get there. <laughs> That's a one of those moments. Come on now. Blast on out the door. So the Super Heisler is the way to go for moving extremely heavy loads. It's really not that hard to get in between these two once you start figuring it out. It uh, looks okay. Almost looks like it's just one big obnoxious locomotive. I wonder if uh, they ever did that back in the day, too. Like, two of these things running back-to-back -back like this. Probably. All right. That was just for victory. Man, I can't imagine much happening from here to there. So the 10 coal car delivery looks like it's going to be a success. And we are going to start running 10 hopper cars now at a turn. I can't see going back after that. It, uh, it definitely works. So I can't imagine we're going to change too much from here. Wait a minute. Oh, that's not good. We're going to derail because I won't get there before the train does. Oh, I don't need to flip that. It's in the right direction. That one's right. This one needs to flip because it's set to the yard. And that we're good. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, nice. Alright, that worked. Phew. Now we're just getting lucky. Give the old freight yard a toot on the whistle. And running that on out. Switches are good. Come on. Our museum with our hand car and Betsy parked inside. That's what that is. Our historical locomotives, if you will. And then we are going to add Betty to that bunch pretty soon, too. Because there's just no real point in using that locomotive for much. Uh, I think we may actually put in a line down at the uh, smelter to do something different with that cordwood because it's just too hard to lose half your load down there on the ground
so zooming by the old engineer homestead and iron Orc should be our next stop on the line it's actually pretty good that that worked i mean it zoomed right up there so i don't know we might try to stretch this out and add two more i'm not opposed to getting a, a 120 coal in a shot rather than the 90 because we dropped one or didn't fill one sorry but um the uh 100 anything over 100 is going to be good so i'm not ever going to add another heisler in here to the mix i can tell you that so we're not going to be going for much more than maybe another two uh, but I think it pulled it easy enough. We could probably get two more in there. The thing is, if, if we really want to, because I don't know, this train in itself was a big enough pain in the butt that I don't know that I have any interest in getting the weights that high. I don't know if that, you know, plays into the links or not at a certain point um, and just makes them easier to break. And maybe that was some of the some of the issues I was running into up at the iron mine or not. I don't know. So I don't know how much more I would have an interest in adding to this. Plus I know, you know, it just starts getting to be too big a pain in the butt just to load the cars, to be honest. For me anyway. So I don't know that I'll be adding might not add any. We might just, you know, go with it works. If anything, throw a caboose on the back, I guess is what we'll do. And maybe that'll help make that last car easier to load to. Um, although the iron works, the way that the shade works up there is actually kind of nice because you can just pull the car into the light ever so slightly and then you know it's pretty much lined up with the last car. So as long as you can see it, you're good to go and two probably wouldn't change that much but I guess I'd rather just add a caboose and then uh, multiplayer that that means you could have somebody back there to help with some of the braking on the downhill and uh, maybe not get the train compressing on itself so much all right we are gonna have to definitely come to a stop cuz that is not flipped in the right direction and we definitely want to get that done well we do have to pull this thing up quite a bit further forward although we turn the brakes off we can probably come back to this locomotive and see it even easier because then we're not you know already a car deep or a car and a half deep so we may just do it like this probably a little easier for loading and unloading and this is going to be our first real opportunity to finally get some coal delivered at a time uh, sure we might lose a few on that first car but if we do that's not that big a deal in the big picture There we are, starting to pile up the coal pile. Yeah, I mean, if we could just keep it moving at this rate, we'll just keep on loading it. And watch it stack on up, is what we'll do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure we lost a couple out of those first cars. Hopefully we don't get going too fast here by the end that we can still get them all to fall on the dock. Ten coal cars, all delivered, little money back in the bank, and we're going to call that one a success. Get in here, slam on a brake, and probably call that one an episode. So, ten cars of coal finally can be done. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all have a great day. Remember, if you get a chance, like, share, subscribe. Subscriptions are free, but they sure do help the channel. Y'all have a good day.